This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. What I'm looking at today is Parasite the Grey, which is a six-episode limited series on Netflix directed by Yang Sang Ho. Parasite the Grey, as I mentioned, is a six-episode limited series revolving around the beachhead of an alien invasion of a city in Korea. The science fiction horror series is based on a manga created and written by Hitoshi Iwaki. The manga was adapted into two live action films in Japan in 2014 and 2015. There's also an anime television series based on a live action show also in 2014. By August of 2022, the Parasite manga was one of the biggest selling series of all time with 25 million copies in circulation. The Netflix series also revolves around an alien presence establishing a beachhead in a Korean city. Though I have not read the anime, nor have I seen any of the other properties that Parasite has branched off into. So I can't say if it is faithful to them or not, which in a way I think is a good thing because I don't carry the baggage of expectation. Though I do compare it to things that I've seen that aren't Parasite, such as John Carpenter's The Thing, as well as the 1978 invasion of the Body Snatchers. The story begins with someone who is taken over at a music festival and he grows tentacles from his head and begins slaughtering people. The second time we see the parasite are when they try to take over a woman named Yang Suni. And at the time, she's being hunted by a maniac. And he begins to slash at her. Something happens in that she's very wounded. And the parasite has to heal her to possess her. It makes sense in that humans are vessels to them, and if the vessel is damaged, they can't properly use it. But at the same time, because it directed its energies towards healing her wounds, it's not able to take full possession of her, which is confusing. I don't understand why that's the case. And the series doesn't explain it, not to my satisfaction at any rate. But instead of the parasite taking over Suni, you have two distinct individuals in one body. So you have Suni and the parasite, which she names Heidi. And now we have this new entity. It's not quite human, but it's not parasite either. The narrative also revolves around Sol Kang Wu, who is a petty criminal who witnesses his sister killed by the parasites. So now these two are going to unite to stop the parasite threat, though they're not the only ones. There is also Team Grey, which is a paramilitary style unit that comes in and begins to hunt for the parasites. The series doesn't tell us how Team Grey came to be. We don't know its origins. We only know that they're there to fight the parasites. And this is a wasted opportunity for me. Because Team Grey, particularly its leader, Cho Yun Kyung, is really interesting. I would have loved to have seen how Team Grey came to be. Because when we saw the parasite earlier attacking the festival, it goes without saying that there would be cameras. But people, as in the public, seem unaware of the parasite. So I'm assuming that they're controlling the flow of information. That's the only thing that makes sense to me, and it's logical under the circumstances. But once again, it's not something that the narrative really tells you. As I said, I'm assuming it. Though I shouldn't have to. 
the thing of it is, the narrative of Parasite the Grey has issues. It's not badly written, but like I illustrated earlier, it seems to not give the viewer information to make certain decisions. Now, perhaps these type of things were thought to be minor by the writers and the director. I don't know. But once again, this rears its head. And this time it's that we don't know why the parasites are there. It's established earlier on they come from space. Well, they came from the sky, but being that they're alien, I assume they came from space. Very much in the vein of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Now, with Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the goal was very clearly spelled out. They were trying to take over the world. It didn't matter that they landed in New York and began to take over people there. New York was only a beachhead to the world. Their goal was to expand beyond New York. Parasite the Grey, I don't get that feeling. It's really strange. It feels small while being pretty visually large. It's, it's just an odd thing. I would have liked to have known what the aliens were at least thinking about doing beyond organizing. They're really big on organizing. But beyond that, we just don't know. Problems with Parasite the Grey are really unusual, especially when you take into account that Yang Sung Ho directed Train to Busan. I don't know if he wrote it off the top of my head, but he certainly directed it. And that is, by my reckoning, one of the best, and I hear it's also going to be remade by the guy who did the Conjuring movies. His name is eluding me. But it won't be good because... There's no reason to remake Train of Busan. It just works. Don't dub it. Subtitles on it. And enjoy. Parasite de Grey, when everything sinks, works exceptionally well. And when you see all six episodes, I think you come to understand that the title is a lot more clever than you might have thought. The gray, by my reckoning, refers to two things. The first is, as I already mentioned, Team Gray, which is the paramilitary type unit in charge of containing and destroying the parasite threat. But there's also gray in a sense of amorphousness. But the parasite admire and envy most about humans is our ability to organize, to become better than we are as an individual by joining with others. The parasite can't really do this. They don't understand it. And in fact, they're very logical, almost Vulcan-like in fact. So they don't understand that spark, that drive that makes people unite to face greater threats. And the parasite exists only to kill and to possess. And that's it. They have no real purpose other than that. So the parasite, at the same time as killing and taking over people, some of them are starting to learn, to understand what it is that makes people what we are. And they try to copy that because in the series, they are remarkably deadly, but they're individual. They can attack in groups, but there's nothing more to it than that. They're not thinking beyond the moment. And I don't think, for the most part, they're capable of thinking beyond the moment they're in. So either they're killing you or they're not. And in between space, nothing is really happening with them. And as I said, this is something parasites come to envy in humans, and something that some of them even begin to learn. Parasite de Grey is very much a combination of John Carpenter's thing and Invasion of the Body Snatchers. The thing of it is, though, those movies were very much practical based. Well, at the time of 
Invasion of Body Snatchers, I don't think CGI was a thing. I believe that was 1978. But the thing, I want to say mid-80s, CGI was present as far as I'm aware, but the thing uses none of it. It's all practical effects. And that's important because it makes the threat real because it's literally there. In the case of Parasite the Great, it is all CGI. And the problem with that is it feels not as tactile. Just watching some of these parasites, these tentacles grow out of their heads, how they respond to the world around them in a viewing sense, not in the sense of the series. It looks on occasion kind of fake. It doesn't look like it's there. And that's because it's not. This over-reliance on CGI in my book brings it down a little in my esteem. As I said, it's still watchable, it's still quite good, but it needed physical effects beyond the occasional decapitation, which do I think are about two. It needed something that helped the viewer invest in a really bizarre, visually speaking, concept. And without those practical effects, it's a little harder to do. I'm not saying it fails. I am saying it's hard. As I mentioned earlier, some of the parasites begin to understand that organization, combining your efforts, is a way to become stronger. It becomes a story about the aliens understanding that the individual is not all, and that the group is important. Up to this point, the parasites are pretty much taking over whomever they can find. There's no rhyme or reason necessarily to it. If you're present, where there's a parasite, they will try to take you over or potentially kill you and eat you. That's it. Those certain parasites begin to learn and to understand that there has to be more to that if they're to survive. So it goes about trying to act in a fashion that is very unparasite-like. And as a result, it becomes targeted by other parasites. Another curious thing is that Yan Sang Ho, the director and co-writer of Parasite the Great, spends relatively little time on the idea that the parasite can become other people, which was a very important concept with John Carpenter's The Thing, as well as Invasion of the Body Snatchers. It's this idea that they can be your brother, your lover, your mother, whoever. That is particularly scary. But the thing of it is, Yang Sang Ho only deals with it in the last, I want to say, two episodes, maybe two and a half, and it felt very much like a wasted opportunity because there's a whole element of paranoia and tension that's removed when you take those elements away. And in fact, I mentioned inconsistencies earlier, and how this is handled is very much an inconsistency. We later see that the parasites can sever someone's head and possess them. Now this has not happened in at least, I want to say, the first three episodes of the series. This was not something the parasites could do until one decided to do it. This is not even to say that it wasn't possible, but once again, if the parasites could do that, why weren't they doing it in the first place? And if they could do that in the first place, you get that potential tension, because the parasite could be anybody, once again. Though, they don't do emotion very well. So you wouldn't really have the suspense that could be built from like a John Carpenter's thing in the case of the Parasite, because they just would be different. Very much, in fact, like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Very logical, very cold, very 
matter of fact, not at all like the average person. Another inconsistency that is really blatant and really bugged me, another inconsistency that I thought really distracted was that Team Grey has a hound essentially a captured parasite, and they use it to detect other parasites because they respond to other parasites in their presence. This parasite that I call the hound is extremely valuable to Team Grey because they have no way of detecting parasites. Well, they have x-ray machines, which parasites, once they possess you, alter aspects of your skeletal structure, I assume. But outside of that, they have no way in the field of detecting parasites. And with the hound, their parasite tracker, essentially, they can find nests of parasite and destroy them. Now, the problem with this is, in Tim Gray's base, the hound is protected with guards and armored doors, and all sorts of stuff. And Team Grey has a special van they use to move the parasite detector, the hound, about. So when they think there's a parasite, they get the hound, put him in the truck, and head to wherever. And he tells them if there's a parasite presence there or not. They arrive at this location, and they, as in all of Team Grey, go to take care of the parasite. The problem is though, they leave the hound not only unguarded, but in an unlocked truck. This is the dumbest thing you could possibly do. And for me, it feels like something that the director overlooked. Because why would you do that? Other than you're catering to the script. You're not treating this as a real situation necessarily. You're doing something because the script you co-wrote said, do this, do that. And lots of movies do that, by the way. It's not unusual. What is unusual is when it becomes so blatantly obvious that they're doing it. And that's the case here. It's just frustrating to watch because it doesn't make any sense. Parasite the Grey never becomes unwatchable. And it is a six episode limited series, so it goes relatively quickly. But the thing is, it never really grabs the viewer either. It always seems to maintain a distance between what's going on on screen and the viewer, which is a little distracting. Production design is very good, the lighting, cinematography. It is a very well done, expensive looking series. It's well acted. It does most things really, and any shortcomings for Parasite Grey, I'd have to lay at the feet of Yan Sung Ho, who, as I mentioned, directed and co-wrote it. Because there are little issues with it, nothing that's going to ruin it, but little distracting things that, if it were more tightly written, I think it would have resonated much better. But what do you think? This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. If you agree, disagree, let me know down below. And as usual, consider a like or a follow.